In every game tick, an action is not just a choice, it's a necessity. Imagine combining the weirdest skills that can be trained together for efficient rates, speeding up the overall time to max all 23 skills. The max keep is my goal. I will achieve this in the shortest gameplay time possible. By choosing to be an Iron Man, I restrict myself from trading other players and using the Grand Exchange. I have to get everything myself. Welcome to my Max Keep Speedrun, Iron Man Edition, where our ultimate goal is to hit 2277 total by 1600 hours played. Last episode, we took a quick break from Slayer to do 99 woodcutting. Then, we spent our entire cash stack on broad arrowheads, and while fletching at ZMI, we crafted blood runes to hopefully carry us through a few Slayer levels. With 7,000 blood runes to my name, it's time to see how many Slayer levels we can get. I forgot where I left off when I last slayed, but it looks like we're starting Slayer back with 392 task completions and 1.8k points. 1800 points is already a lot, and we're close to our 400 streak, so we should be able to skip a lot if needed. The only difference between slaying now and previously is that being level 93 gives us a chance to get smoke devils, and these actually carry a high weighting to be assigned, which is 9. When plugging my task unlocks and blocks into the wiki calculator, Smoke Devils become tied as the 4th most common task I can be assigned. Starting off the day right, here is level 90 attack. So Abyssal Demon task complete, let's see if we get Smoke Devils. Nope, just Steel Dragons. Sometimes my character likes to play this game called Dragon Roulette, where I just get assigned black, steel, and blue dragons constantly. Looks like we're playing that right now. Here comes the Smoke Devils. Nope, but I'm not going to complain about Abyssal Demons. 172 Smoke Devils. This is massive. For those unfamiliar with Smoke Devils, this task is pretty much any average player's highest Slayer XP per hour by a good chunk. Barraging Necrodevils can be upwards of 100k an hour is the second best, but Smoke Devils with the cannon goes all the way up to 180k an hour. It's quite the difference. Unfortunately, because we're an Iron Man, we don't have a cannon, however, even without a cannon, barraging these guys is still about 110k an hour. Not only that, but this 93 Slayer creature also drops the most powerful magic necklace in the game, the Occult Necklace. This necklace for some reason has a 10% magic strength buff. If you add up the Ancestral Robe Top, Bottom, and Tormented Bracelet, the best in slot mage pieces for those three slots, they have a total of 9% magic damage. You heard that right, this one necklace is better than all three of those combined. So this task seems like an obvious go, but why exactly is it so high XP per hour? Well, the dungeon has 36 smoke devils in it, and while we might not necessarily be able to tag all 36, imagine tagging even half of them. Ice Barrage has a cap of hitting 9 targets at once, so if you're able to consistently lure even a third of the room, you'll be hitting the maximum amount of targets with every single barrage. This is not possible with any other task, as most enemies only have 6 to 8 spawns in one area. So, with all of that in mind, on the Max Cape Iron Man speedrun account, let's block Smoke Devils. Gargoyles have a weighting of 8, meaning they are less commonly assigned, so if I have to permanently skip one of these tasks, I would rather block Smoke Devils. So, all of that, despite Smoke Devils sounding great, for this very specific account build and its goals, it doesn't line up to be efficient. I'm already 99 magic, so the barrage XP doesn't really get me closer to 99 melees. They don't drop insane bones or ashes, so I don't get any prayer XP from Smoke Devils either. Whereas when I do stuff like Necreals or Abbey Demons, I get at least 50k an hour prayer. And finally, while Smoke Devils do drop Alks and GP, it's only just enough to cover the cost of Ice Barrage. I don't actually profit from it, and I really do need GP. So with all of that missing, is 110k an hour Slayer really worth it for my account? Don't forget, because a speedrun is in-game time, we're allowed to log out while we stack NPCs on other accounts. Of course, since we're an Iron Man, we get half XP from each kill along with no drops, making this not worth it for most NPCs. However, Blood Vells were the one task that I never stopped doing or extending. These guys are still comfortably 150k an hour Slayer. And because my ult is barraging at the same time as my Iron Man, I don't have to use Ice Barrage on the Iron. 
I can use the cheaper version, Ice Bursting, since my ult does most of the DPS anyway. While this same strategy would theoretically work on Smoke Devils as well, the only way you're allowed to damage them is if you're on task. Meaning I'd have to get a new task on my ult every single time I get assigned Smoke Devils. Given all that extra effort for little reward, it's easier to just block them. I forgot to record, but I just hit 2200 total level, which means we're only 77 levels to go until we max. Wasn't recording obviously, but there is 92 attack, halfway to 99 on our final melee. I needed a quick break from Slayer and there is a good reason, but basically we have to do cooking ASAP. The cooking strategy is to buy 10 raw Kawambams per world in this shop, and then use them on a fire lit by an alt and simply repeat until enough cooking XP has been achieved. Since we're only buying 10 per world, you could imagine there's a lot of hopping going on. It shouldn't be a problem, but it is. Jagex accounts only allow you to hop 500 times per 5 hours, before getting this error message every time you try to log in. You then slowly gain your ability to hop again at a rate of 100 hops per hour, meaning it takes 5 hours to reset back to normal. With the amount of hopping we're doing, we gain about 1 mil cooking XP before hitting that limit. I don't want to be stuck with 99 everything and 85 cooking and only be allowed to do 1 to 2 mil cooking XP per day. So I want to slowly start chipping away at cooking now. And there is 90 cooking complete. I ended up doing a 1 mil session right before I got off last night, and then when I logged in this morning, I was able to do another 1 mil. After spending 1.4 mil on 2 mil cooking XP, I started seeing this account differently. I am freaking poor. And while I did know this already, I don't think it's clicked because I was so far away, but as we're at 1333 hours played, with under 300 to go until we're supposed to max, I think it's finally clicked that I will never be able to afford normal methods to max cave. I need to start finding ways to save money ASAP. The first decision that I made was to stop casting thralls for the remaining of my slayer. Thralls were a ghost that I've been summoning to give me some extra DPS on my melee tasks, and every 60 seconds I would have to summon a new ghost, costing me 10 fire runes, 5 blood runes, and 1 cosmic rune. All of these runes I've already crafted myself at ZMI but there is always the alternative of selling the blood runes for 200 GP each. Knowing this, we are spending about 60k an hour GP on casting thralls. It's a very low number, however, even being already 94 slayer, I have about 70 hours remaining on melee slayer. Not casting thralls for 60k an hour during all of this would save me about 4.2 mil. So exactly how desperate are we for GP? Well, our viables left doing the method that I was expecting, we need 95 to 99 construction, which costs about 20 mil doing mythical cape racks, 90 to 99 cooking, which is about 6 mil for raw kawambams, 93 to 99 herb war, and when paying the guy in Narda to make our unfinished potions, this is going to cost about 8 mil. Most expensive, 87 to 99 smithing, and wanting to do gold ores, it would cost 37.8 mil. Then, for some ungodly unknown reason, the cost of 93 to 99 fletching. We only need to buy the broad arrowheads, yet this is still going to cost us 36 mil. Add the total of all of this, and we still need 108 mil for maxing. Will we get 108 mil from 93 to 99 Slayer? Realistically, probably not. This is why we have to adjust. Coming close to my first ever Nekiro trip without thralls, we're not even getting 30k an hour Slayer. I used to get 32k with thralls, so either I had bad RNG this trip, or I just straight up underestimated how good thralls are. 
So naturally, I went to the DPS calculator on the OSRS wiki and plugged in my gear. My DPS on Nekiros with my stats, gear, super strength, and piety is 8.825. Thrall's DPS is actually easy to calculate. If Thrall's is always summoned and attacking, it hits 1,500 times per hour. And because it ignores the enemy's defense, we know that the average hit is 1.5. So an extra 2,250 damage every hour equates to an extra 0.625 damage per second. Realistically, our thralls won't attack every single tick because it takes some time when switching targets, but if we assume that it's attacking 75% of the time, that's still an extra 0.5 DPS, which is still a 5% increase. And when this only cost us 60k an hour, after seeing these numbers, I just had to go right back to thralls. One trip was enough. Just for one last comparison, if we upgraded to a Torva plate body and legs, primordial boots, and ferocious gloves, we would still be doing less DPS than someone in my rag gear with thralls. So while we still spend money on thralls, and knowing I can't afford every good method to 99, I think it's time we consider Giant's Foundry for smithing. Hopefully not all of it, but I think we're definitely gonna have to do some of it. Since we now have 90 cooking, smithing is our lowest skill which means we can finally play Tears of Guthix for the first time in months. While Tears of Guthix wouldn't be worth to do on smithing because of gold bars being 450k an hour, if we assume Giant's Foundry is 200k or even 250, Tears of Guthix becomes worth it. That is 3 minutes gone for 15k smithing XP. Kind of weird going to a skill like that, but we'll take it. Back to where I belong at Necreals, here is 92 Prayer. Just got 93 attack, 95 Slayer, which unlocks us Hydra, and while Hydra is insanely good GP for the account, because we chose to skip pretty much every single PVM upgrade, and our best range weapon is a Rune Crossbow, we probably can't do Hydra efficiently. My 499th task is Dark Beast, which means we're going to Konar next for the extra points on our 500th streak. I decided to use the brimstone keys I had in the past, and... Damn, I didn't make 500 mil. Okay, 11 skeletal wyverns. To be honest, I don't think this is the worst task from Konar, because it should be relatively quick, so I'll give it a shot. Of course, I had to smith a new elemental shield because I dropped one from the quest. Okay, here we are. These wyverns are kind of strong, but I am hoping that I can do all 11 in one trip. They have great GP drops, so this could be good for me depending on my RNG. I ended up getting a battle staff like an elk and 3 rune items, not the worst. I have no idea what I'll do with the magic logs at the moment, but with that task completed, we now have plus 700 points and 2.4k remaining. I want to keep slaying, but of course look, we only have 2k blood runes remaining. So, we're forced to take our natural break to go runecraft more blood so that we can fund Slayer again. Of course, the first step to that is to go through all of my alks that I got from Slayer while mining Dayal, as we need the money to buy broads to multi-skill. This probably won't make any sense, but these are actually all of the alks since level 90 Slayer. I did take a break at level 93 Slayer to runecraft more bloods, but I didn't bother alking anything. So, our first inventory got us 13 mil cash, which is decent. And of course, alking some whips for GP as they are actually decent for me, 10 of these whips will be an extra 760k GP for us. And finally, while running between rocks, I'm able to use all of my adamant and rune arrowheads I got from worms for some small fletching XP. Since fletching is stupid expensive, I just gotta look at it like 1k fletching XP is 6k GP saved. 14 million cash and 31k Dale Essence. Let's go. It looks like I never sold my nature or law runes from my last ZMI session, so I'm gonna quickly do that so that we can buy as many broads as possible. And after all of that, plus the GP I had already in my bank from the coin drops, we had 21 mil GP ready to be spent.
And finally, with 330k broad arrowheads, aka 3.3 mil fletching XP, and 2.8 mil cash remaining, we can start runecrafting again. Here was 94 fletching that I forgot to record. 4 hours later, still going hard, 95 fletching. Just for some variety, 97 runecrafting. Unfortunately, I did just run out of day all essence. But we can keep going with our pure essence that we got from PVMing, as this is still worth using. 96 fletching. And with 68,000 broad arrowheads remaining, I'm actually running out of pure essence before I run out of GP for once. So, you guys know what that means. It's time to go back to Slayer. So, because it's time to return to Slayer for the 73rd time, and hopefully the last time for 95 to 99, here's a good stopping point for the video. While I do the Slayer grind, I will hopefully passively do 99 cooking, so let's do a quick review of our stats real quick. We are sitting at 2214 total level, meaning only 63 level ups are remaining. Having 1373 hours played, to finish our original goal of 1600 hours, we will hopefully be done in the next 230 hours. There's still a lot of herb lore going on, along with the fact that we have no idea how long smithing will take us, since there's two completely different methods available depending on how poor we are. As always, TY for watching everybody, and if you ever want to watch the remaining of my Slayer grind live, I'll be live at kick.com slash jcwrs. Take care, and peace out.